Hello and welcome to another Rudridge tutorial video. Today I'm joined by Paul Duke, the General Manager of Rudridge. Paul, what are we looking at today? Today we're going to be looking at a range of Marshalls commercial products. We're in the Rudridge yard at Farnham. What are we looking at specifically? We're going to be looking at precast concrete curb and associated products. The guys have laid out some of our most popular selling units. These will be used in carriageways, footpaths and cycleways. Well, this is quite obviously a curb, but why are they so important? They are designed to create a separation and demarcation between pedestrians and vehicles. They can also improve the overall appearance of the final project. Technically, there are two main reasons why we need curbs. Firstly, they aid in the overall construction and the strength of the road. Secondly, they aid the flow of water to the nearest outlet. Overall, creating a safer environment for the benefit of everyone. We'll start off with our most popular selling curb, which is the HB2. HB2, what, what does that mean, Paul? HB2, half ba HB stands for half batter, which is the profile that faces the direction of the traffic, and two is the size of the curb. The curbs are measured 125 across the width and 255 across the height. And they're all 914 mil long. These are available in three different sizes and three different profiles. What you have to imagine, Tony, is where you're standing now is in the road and the finished road surface level will be generally five inches or 125 mil from the top of the curb. So actually most of the curb is hidden then? You're correct. Moving along, we have now created a mock-up of a pedestrian crossing. What we have to do is we have to lower the curb line uh, down to road level to stop any trip hazard. On the dropper curb, they are, the shoulder end is the high end, which is the half batter in this case. Looking from the road, this will be a left hand. This is the high end or the shoulder end. And it goes down to the full nose crossing curb, which is a 125 by 150. So Paul, you described this as a ball nose curb. We've got something very similar here. What is the difference between these two? What we have here, Tony, this is uh, what's known as a square channel. This should be used between the two droppers on a pedestrian crossing because it fits flush with the road surface and won't cause any trip hazard. What we have here, we have the ball nose edge. The surface comes just below the ball nose and it is designed for vehicular crossings. I'm often about in town and I see these sort of paving stone designs. What's the thinking behind the two colours and the actual design of them? These are tactile blister paving. They are designed for visually impaired and partially sighted people to aid the crossing. These raised bobbles, they can feel under feet to stop them walking into the carriageway. The colours, the red is designed for control crossings, traffic lights and zebra crossings. The buff is used on all other crossings. They do come in different profiles and different types of slab, but we'll cover that on a separate video. So this one at the back then, Paul, is this part of the curb range? This, this, Tony, this is a 50 by 150 flat top edging or path edging. It's a restraint between a footpath and soft landscaping or hard and soft landscaping. This one here is a flush profile or flat top and the footpath will be at the same level. If you move down here, we can see this one has a ball nose, same as on the curb, and the finished paving level would be about this height, which is about 10, 20 mil below the ball nose. So am I right in saying this is a right-handed curb? You are correct. The shoulder is on the high end, as you look from the road, and you're facing that way, that is on the right-hand side. This is one of the most common questions we get asked. It also raises the level back up to a standard curb height, and if we move along here, we've got a straight curb again. And then we come on here and we've got to create a corner. Here we have an external angle and an internal angle. They are 90 degrees and they are designed to avoid any unnecessary cutting on site. And they can create car parking areas and it's to make it quicker and easier to install on site. These two curbs are exactly the same length, but different shapes. What is this one for? This is what's known as a dish channel. This is a low cost and simple, effective way of removing surface water into the nearest outlet on a highway. 
As we move on round, we have another internal angle here. We have a full size curb, HB2 again. And we have another one here, but this one's a slightly shorter length. This is 600 mil long. Generally, they are made to order. However, we keep them in stock at Rudridge. These are to um, avoid unnecessary cutting on site. From the straight curb, we now have a 90 degree angle to create and we're going to use a quadrant this time. Okay, why haven't we used the external angle while we're using the quadrant? We're using a quadrant. This creates a smoother alignment between two different curb runs. They're available in two sizes. This one is a 450 mil, and we have over here a 305 mil. Has the same profile as an HB2 in this case, but it is available in a bull nose and in a splay. Typically, they will be used in car parking areas traffic islands or barrier surrounds. They can also be used in petrol forecourts. Here, Tony, we have a transition curb. These are handed and they are designed from one, to go from one profile to the next profile, keeping the same height in the curb. This is a left-handed one. Standing from the road, same as with the droppers, the hand, on this case, is the left hand. This is changing the profile, going from a half batter, and then we're now moving to a 45 degree splay. These are used in areas where of fast moving traffic, 40 miles an hour and above. These curbs are clearly not straight. What would they be used for? Well, Tony, this is the final part of the standard curb that we're going to show today. These are radial units. They're 780 mil long, and they're designed for bell mouths and entrances to estate roads and for going around bends easily and cleverly. Typically, what we have here is a quarter circle, and how you would measure that is from the front face of the curb, and if you imagine I'm two meters back here, if you measure that line in that quarter, that is the radius, to give you a two meter radius. So what's the difference between external and internal? The profile on an internal curb, the profile or the half batter in this case, is on the internal edge if you're standing from the road. And we are roadside? We are roadside. Again, these are 780 mil long, and the reason they're 780 mil long is they're cut to form the perfect circle. They don't have to do it on site then. These are then be typical, used on bell mouths and in housing states. Radius curve are available in different sizes, going from one metre through to 12 metre. Marshals stamp the backs of all of their radius curbs with the size and number. We've now looked at the standard range of curb. While we're here at Farnham, let's go and have a look at another range. Here we are. Well, this looks very different to what we've looked at before. Uh, it certainly is, Tony. This is um, the Marshalls Conservation Curb. This is made out of specialist aggregates, 48% recycled material. They also use a black aggregate in there, which creates a sparkle in different types of light. Now this finish is, is a textured finish and this is created by shot blasting. So would this be available in the same range of products we've used before and where would we use this? Yes, it is available in the same range of fittings. As you can see here, we have a number of different sizes of curb. These are the centre stones. These are the full height profile curbs. It is also available in a radius and in the quadrants and angles. You would typically use this in rural or countryside areas or when an architect is, is after a particular type of finish. Marshalls also produce the Saxon and Charmwood curb. They are all made of specialist aggregates and are available in different colours. We finished at the yard in Farnham Pole. Let's go to a site in Epsom to see some curb being installed. We've come to a site in Surrey. Paul, what are we doing today? Today we're on a car park surfacing contract. We're replacing some existing curb that has been damaged by tree roots. The site has been prepared. They've removed the existing curb, dug a trench, part filled it with concrete, placed a string line to get the accurate levels. Our next job is to prepare the concrete, typically an ST1 mix, and that is to bed the curb on. The guys are now going to mix the concrete that we have here, and going to lay to a 150 mil bed. Yep. 
We're now filling the trench with the pre-mixed concrete. Are we ready to lay the kerbs now? What they've done, Tony, they've laid the concrete in the trench, they've repositioned the line. In this instance, we're going to be using 125 by 150 ball nose kerb due to the levels of the existing tarmac and because of the depth of the ground behind. The kerb has now been positioned and levelled. As you can see, they've left a one to two mil joint using a trowel. This is to stop any damage on the face of the kerb. They've now wet the kerb and we're going to haunch the back of it using a wetter mix of concrete. Generally, the bed is a drier, leaner mix. The haunch has now been smoothed off to allow for the soft landscaping to come to the edge of the kerb. Generally with a haunch in, if it was for highway construction, it would have to be a minimum of 150 mil. We've now moved to a finished area of the car park and Paul, this is very similar to what we was looking at at the yard. What we have here, Tony, is we have a quadrant, we have an HB2 kerbs, we have an internal angle, a pedestrian crossing. The final thing that will happen on this site now is it will have a 40 mil regulated wearing course. Hope you've enjoyed watching another Rudridge tutorial video. My thanks to Paul Duke and Marshalls. For more information on Rudridge, please go to the Rudridge website, www.rudridge.co.uk.